Washan, what we call Washan in general, it's a style uh, named after the Washan site. A great number of paintings uh, are preserved on that cliff up to 40 meters high, etc. It's a style which is well determined, which uh, was in use for about seven centuries, and the Chinese told us about it from roughly. Uh, 500 before Christ to 200 after, something like that. And uh, they know, uh, because uh, they have made excavations in the area, they have compared the weapons uh, that are represented on the walls with weapons uh, well known archaeologically, and so they can relate it with this and that emperor, etc. So it's fairly well dated. It is located in the Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region of southern China, near the border of Vietnam. It is actually not just one rock art site, but many. There are 38 sites along the Zhujiang River. All those paintings are on vertical cliffs, big cliffs, which are spectacular cliffs. The colors of the wall are whitish and they stand out from the vegetation around, of course, which is deep green. And uh, sometimes there are those big uh, traces of black, which comes from leaching from the top, etc. And so, these places are really spectacular on the river. So that uh, those paintings are tied to the river. There's no doubt about that. So there must have been something about the power of the river, the, uh, the river being a god, so, so something like that. Very probably. The traditional Lo Yu people of the region believed in sacred power. By making art in this place, this message was heard by the sacred power, by the gods of their culture. What makes them more spectacular still is that the people went as high as they could. And uh, they didn't just concern themselves with painting, uh, or they could reach easily standing, you know, on the ground, etc. No, 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 they went as, as, uh, as high as they could. Uh, that is unusual. Uh, having paintings 20, 30, 40 meters high, that's uh, something else. I mean, there are a few places in the world where you can find that kind of thing. So they went as high as they could. In fact, the problem is not completely settled from what our Chinese colleagues told us, because there are several possibilities. They might have been 
have built scaffoldings, they might have climbed, they might have dropped from the top with ropes, etc., which is quite possible. But in my opinion, it doesn't seem very likely, I think, from the bottom up. China itself possesses a wealth of rock art, among which the paintings of Hua Shan are extraordinarily impressive. Since its academic discovery in the 1950s, Chinese scholars have been recording and analyzing the style and nature of the paintings of Hua Shan. You've got those men or women dancing, you know, with their heads of bright. A breeze. It's something that you find also the world over. In Valka Monica, for example, you've got those images that have been well known for a very long time. You see people dancing and having their, their hands up. In, on some other occasions, you see people sideways using drums. Uh, and those drums were related to bronze drums, which are well known uh, archaeologically, and we found some, we saw some examples in, in the, the museum. So it does relate uh, to people feasting or having some ceremony. It's a ceremonial type of art. Sites are nice, paintings uh, mainly dancing scenes and I have seen a lot of dancing scenes in uh, Indian rock art also. It is a good thing to do comparative study for, for traditions, or living traditions and we can understand rock art much, much better. We find dancing scenes in much of the rock art around the world where there are links between tribal practices and ancestral ceremonies, we often find insights into a culture's ancient art. Another point which is quite interesting, and which we found out, uh, that kind of dance is still going on in the local villages. Some people have still got religious feelings about those, uh, those images and those sites. And we were told about that by a 70-year-old man, an old man from the village, I think he was the head of the village. So he told us a few decades back, he used to come with his grandfather, with his father, to organize uh, ceremonies there. And he, he talked very freely about it, and s saying that in the past there were ceremonies, nowadays there are no ceremonies, but people still, uh, for example, uh, they are forbidden to, to, to point at the paintings because that would attract catastrophes. Uh, and uh, if they had to pass along a, a path which was at the foot of the cliff, uh, below the paintings, they would not speak. They would not speak to as a mark of respect, even today, you see. So, so there is still something going on. That is not that uh, astonishing because a religion of which there remains 2,000 years before, 1,000, 800 years later, well, after all, you know, Christianity is 1,000 years old, so why not? And I have seen in India also that living tradition is still going on, still people are going to the sites and they are performing. So it's a great thing, understanding rock art. For the cosmology of these artists, of the Lo Yu people, the mountain, the river and the field were perceived as representations of the three major elements of their universe, sky, water, earth. The art had to be placed here. Huashan is quite a phenomenon. It may not have the oldest art, and it may not be the most varied art, but it does possess the largest rock art panel in the world, with over 1,800 painted motifs covering an area of over 4,000 square meters. Huashan is of huge cultural significance. 